Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What rules were put in place because of you? My younger brother was always late to school, small school, and was tardy. He figured out if he just skipped first period and went to second he was counted as being on school and no late penalty because he was at second period on time. They changed this the following year. No sign language during silent lunch punishment. My lunch period was so loud we got put on silent lunch for over a month straight. I decided the only clear solution was to teach my entire table sign language so we could still talk without getting in trouble. Apparently it was unfair to the kids who didn't know how to sign, so we had to stop. No more than 4 margaritas per person on dollar margarita, and beer, night, in college, some friends and I used to go to a Mexican restaurant every Thursday, and often on Saturdays for $1 margaritas. As a group, we would go through a lot, then they put the rule in, then they changed it to $2 margaritas, and $1 draft beers. A friend of mine in a military school found out the regs never stated what color the bed sheets for a bed made for inspection had to be in. So this madman went and bought Power Ranger sheets and made the perfect regulation bed. I have never seen so many SGTS lose their shit but be unable to do anything since the regs were perfectly followed. Needless to say the next year they were updated to state sheets must be plain white. I had a teacher in 7th grade that banned the use of the word shamu. We apparently were using it as a joke answer to everything, which I had started doing as a once-in-a-lifetime joke for the one-hour period. News spread I guess that she didn't like it. And soon all seven class periods were giggling and saying Shamu to everything she said. I came in two days later to a referral, an accusation that I had organized the Shamu party, and the entirety of her classes were instructed to never mention Shamu in her presence again. It was, obscure to say the least. Uber expense with drinks for clients at my work. Years ago we took a bunch of clients out and everyone had way too much to drink so I ordered everyone Ubers home. Turned in the expense report to our account manager, just under 400 bucks in Ubers, and she had no clue what an Uber was. I explained to my bosses that we expense drinks for clients why not expense Ubers. Now if we pay for drinks for clients we also pay for Ubers. Back in the day a radio station had a weekly trivia contest. The prize was a free pizza and movie rental. Somehow my mom figured out which book they were using for the trivia questions. She bought it and memorized all the answers. Each week we would call in immediately. Sometimes we were the first but even if we weren't it didn't matter because other people were usually just guessing. We won almost every time. Each week, even though we changed up who would actually make the call they eventually figured out we were all from the same household. So they made it a rule you couldn't win if your family had already won in the last month or whatever. Up till then, we enjoyed a lot of free pizzas. Local amusement park added a no blindfolds on roller coasters rule because of me. When I was in middle school, my friend and I thought it would enhance the overall experience if we blindfolded ourselves on the biggest roller coaster at a local amusement park. We got one of those pictures they take on the ride and there we are, blindfolded in the middle of a tunnel, having the time of our lives. Looking back, we easily could have strangled ourselves or worse because we literally just used scarves tied around our heads. Next year we went back to the same roller coaster and they had added a no blindfolds or loose accessories to the list of rules before the ride. I had to sue my school district back in high school just to leave special education after fighting it for over a decade. Special education students now have the right built into every single IEP to attend any standard education class in their grade level or below, earn the associated credits, and also go to both health education and driver's education. They could do none of that before the lawsuit. Back in elementary school I remember there used to be this kid who followed me everywhere and actively tried to hurt me. When talking to a teacher about it they went oh, 
he just has a crush on you. The next day I walk up to the kid and shove him into a wall. After that there was literally a rule in that grade don't follow other students. That backfired poorly. Back in the 1980s we were allowed to pick our own high school classes. My freshman year I picked two gym classes back to back and the school said no one has ever done that before. Only one gym class was allowed to be scheduled after that. I'm kind of a legend. Male students are not allowed to wear hair accessories. We had the rule about hair not touching collars, couldn't be past eyebrows, or over the ears. I grew my hair out and just put it up in headbands. After receiving multiple detentions and fighting them and winning, the next year, they made the rule. Oh, I was a teacher who coached debate and took the team of high school students on weekend tournament trips. I had new rules every year and my co-coach and I privately called them the name of the student. E.g. the Jess rule was that if you assaulted anyone, you were sent home. The Annie rule was no debating in fake accents. There was the Dylan rule, which was no communal porn watching in the hotel rooms. Jess rule number two was do everything you can to vomit into the garbage can or toilet and not on the floor. Jess rule number three was no yelling at nurses in the ER that you are a virgin when they ask you to take a pregnancy test. Jess rule number four was we can cut you off after 12 minutes of no stop talking. Jess was a character, obviously. Well, I doubt they're teaching the class these days. But when I took advanced programming techniques using Fortran, our professor added a line to all our projects stating that all programs had to be written in Fortran and only in Fortran. When a student asked if why he'd added that, he told the class to ask me. I just grinned. I still got a perfect score on the one where I had a Fortran shell call an assembler subroutine which did 99.99% of the work. Hat. No playing games in the computer labs, established at UW-Madison in 1993. I may have been involved in a very raucous, impromptu, doom land party that allegedly lasted up to 48 hours. Allegedly. I used to ride on the bottom area of the shopping carts at our nearest grocery store. I thought it was fun to put my hands on the front of it, sliding them along the ground while the cart was moving, yes, I was gross. One sticky spot on the ground later and my hand was pulled back and thumb went right under the wheel. Crunched my little thumbnail and my mom had to remove it. Anyway, the store put up signs after that saying it's against the rules for kids to ride in the bottom of carts. No stealing from the cash drawer at work or theft in general. I wasn't the one stealing but was managing a hotel when I caught an employee taking $20 out of the cash drawer and putting it in his pocket. I of course fired him on the spot and figured that was the end of it. Two weeks later I get an unemployment notice from the state showing he filed for wrongful dismissal. I responded back stating he was terminated for theft. A week later they asked me to send them our employee handbook and training materials. Shortly thereafter I received notice that they awarded him unemployment because nowhere in our handbook or training materials did it explicitly state he was not allowed to take cash from the cash drawer. You would think that would just be common sense but apparently the state of Wisconsin didn't agree. From that moment on, it was explicitly stated in the handbook and training materials that employees were not allowed to take money or any other property that does not belong to them. Not exactly a rule, but the fact that you can easily acknowledge your favorite grocery store employee since 2015 is because of me. The bakery folks invented a one-off cinnamon roll cake for my kid's birthday. I went straight to the store manager and told that dude how much that meant to my kid. And who exactly put it together for us. Two weeks later, he tells me that my story went all the way up the chain to corporate. A month later, Here's a big old box with slips and pens. Not me, but my wife missed a lot of high school for several reasons. She'd go long periods without showing up, but would always make up the work and kept her grades up. Once graduation came around she was told she couldn't graduate because she missed too many days. 
she argued this because there was no attendance policy in place. She was allowed to graduate after writing one final paper, but they quickly added a new policy after she left. <laughs> Belong to a club with ranks and rules for moving up. Dues for the year must be paid in January. Due January 1st but grace period for the month. One dude kept paying late like first week of February. Couple years go by. President is annoyed. Third year guy pays late, president announced new rule the, the dude's last name, rule double dues if paid late and one year added to rank advancement time. Our company operates on Discord, and a lot of people just made it so their personal Discord became their professional Discord rather than making a second account. It made it easy for managers, including me, to invade the lives of their employees by pinging them when they saw a green light in Discord. I wrote a long email to the directors about the separation of work and home life since we are a complete remote company. I suggested that we make it a rule for people to have a work Discord that they log out of at the end of the day so that any messages sent after hours can be dealt with the next day. Since we are a remote company, people are in many time zones, and I don't want to invade someone's evening or early morning when I am in the midst of my work day. The directors agreed, and it became a thing. It is annoying to juggle two accounts, but it is better than people in different time zones being up in each other's shit all the time. What I would like to happen is that we use Slack instead, but everyone likes Discord. <laughs> Break schedules. Started working for a large company that often abused breaks, not giving them at all in some cases but all the staff having 30 minutes deducted from their wages each shift. After having massive issues with management not giving breaks I just so happened to accidentally send the management a copy of the employment law that mentioned breaks and the punishments for companies not complying with it. My high school biology teacher added briefly to all of the essay questions on his tests and quizzes because, if I was bored, I would write unnecessarily long answers in really small handwriting just to take up time. He pointed out the word briefly when handing out a test and said to me, I added that for you. So I made my next answer even longer out of spite. Not me, but my HS coach. I believe he was 19 to 20 at the time. Hooked up with a girl on the women's team. Got fired. Fast forward about 5 years later. I'm becoming a coach for the boys team. We had to take a few classes and CPR. One of the classes, to sum it up, was about protecting yourself. Not having the kids on social media, giving them rides. Etc. That class was implemented because of my coach. Edit, she was a freshman. 14 or 15. At a ballpark I worked concessions at, they had an all-you-can-eat promo day where tickets were more expensive than usual, but concessions around the stadium were free, excluding alcohol. So I worked that day and of course it was chaos, but when the line started dying down later in the game they started sending some of the hourly employees home. Myself included. But of course, I didn't go home. After I clocked out, I stayed in the stadium and got some cheeseburgers and Philly steak and soda and found an empty seat in the crowd for the last few innings. Next year, same promo, but new rule for staff, if you get sent home early, you have to actually leave the stadium. A local self-serve frozen yogurt shop had a special for birthdays, where you pay for a small cup and can load it up as much as you want. Typically, the yogurt was measured by ounces and you paid based on the weight. In high school, my friends and I, about 8 total, did this for everyone's birthday. We would make towers of yogurt that looked like Christmas trees sitting on a very tiny stand definitely over a pound of yogurt each. On the last attempt, the owner recognized us and immediately told us that we needed to pay for our yogurt. We told her that the rules were as much as we could fit in the cup. She tried fighting us, but being stubborn high school students, we wouldn't budge. A couple weeks later, we attempted to get our service again, and they had changed the birthdays to 12 and under. No more ridiculously cheap yogurt for us. 
local politician visited my school. We had a question period with him. I asked a rather pointed and difficult question aimed at his political party. Years later when I was running summer camps. He visited another camp near mine. He now requires all questions from kids slash students be vetted ahead of time by the adults in charge. Don't know for sure if it was because of me, but it does seem to track. Why else would you have to get questions from kids? I got our HR box taken away at work because the HR lady threatened not to pay us if we missed a clock in or clock out, in our defense the phones didn't always work and the clock in system was really unreliable, and I printed out the law stating that was illegal, highlighted it, and put it in her box when no one was around. She threw an unholy fit and tried to figure out who put it in her box, and from them on everything had to be handed in personally lol. In history class in high school, there was about 10 of us really close friends. We would take every opportunity to make your mom jokes. A couple months into class the teacher made us sign a treaty promising to stop making fun of each other's moms. We signed it, and started making fun of each other's dads. You can no longer skip to the end of training videos at Wendy's. I completed about 10 hours of this training when it was implemented, after I'd already been working there a year, in about 45 minutes. Open, skip, 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 do test, rinse and repeat. I was quite proud of my estimated time 45 minutes, time to completion 2 minutes. My store which is a franchise location, got a call from corporate like an hour later. I didn't have to redo any of it though. Minor one, but when I was in elementary school we had one of those bridge building challenges using toothpicks and hot glue. My partner and I realized if we just coated the entire thing with a thick ass layer of hot glue it would make our bridge strong as hell. So we used like a full pack of hot glue sticks, like 20 of them, it was more glue than toothpicks. So after that they limited the number of glue sticks you could use. Golf users can no longer return an unlimited hashtag of balls for tokens. When I was maybe 12ish there was a kids outdoor play area. Go-karts, batting cages and indoor was something like a Chuck E. Cheese, token based games, etc. You could get a wristband for maybe $15 and it get you unlimited rides, mini golf and some other activities. Everything else cost tokens. When you finished golfing you'd get two tokens for bringing your ball back. Unlimited golf, 50 cents worth of play value inside. So my friends and I would go there, speed run two golf games and give the balls back. One dollar to our pockets. Later on we started just fishing balls out of the water hazards and turning them in. Subtly at first and then in bulk later. The guys working there didn't care or actively laughed at it. So we'd have a few hundred tokens. Then we started selling them five for one dollar. We stopped buying the unlimited bands. I'd bike there and earn twenty five dollars in a couple of hours. Management eventually caught on and altered the token for ball exchange. My older brother got a curfew enforced at Boy Scout camp when one of the leaders noticed him walking around the area in the daytime with his eyes closed, counting steps. He may have just been practicing being blind, but the adults assumed he was figuring out how to get around at night without lights so he could get into some kind of mischief. Which, knowing my brother, was also possible. In middle school I would use sharpies to tattoo myself, other kids thought it was cool so I started charging $1 per drawing wherever they wanted. Principal found out and after I wouldn't stop, she put a ban on sharpies for the entire school. Even the teachers couldn't bring them in. I'm a tattoo artist now. I don't think it was a rule but it was kind of an unspoken thing. I was the only brown kid in my school and would act out for attention slash acceptance and my classmates would get a huge laugh out of it but I would be sent to the principal's office every day. I think my principal knew I wasn't a bad kid just looking for attention. He moved a permanent desk into his office for me and every day when I got sent down I would sit there. Had my name on it and everything. 
by the end of that school year I would pack snacks for both of us lol. Haven't thought about that principal in a while but I hope he is well and was patient with other kids as he was with me. English media class in high school. End of year project was to film a movie. Me and three other guys decided to film a gangster movie. Long story short, while filming the final shootout scene behind a local post office, we were swarmed by police and almost got shot. One of the guys got arrested and my teacher almost got fired. The following year, the curriculum was changed and the final project was now an essay to be completed on a popular movie. Edit, I guess I'll add more details. We were filming a shootout scene behind the post office. What we didn't know was that there was a retirement residence right next to it. Apparently several of the residents called 911 about a bunch of kids shooting each other outside. Five police cruisers rolled up and surrounded us. They all jumped out with guns drawn. Drop the gun. Drop the gun. Get on the ground. We were all face down on the pavement with guns to our heads. A.M.I.N. Later, one cop is like they're fake. They're all fake. The officers were upset. They ran our names and unfortunately, the one guy that had nothing to do with anything gets arrested. I felt so bad. He wasn't a part of the class. Just last second, we asked if he'd help us film and he agreed. They take the rest of us back to school where we're sitting in the office as a police officer reams out our teacher and a principal. I almost shot a bunch of kids. How the fuck are you allowing this to happen during school hours? What kind of project allows guns? Fun times. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.